Hi everyone, I'm Sherry Fuller from Thimbles and Acorns, and in this series, I'm going to take you on a new miniature millinery adventure. An adventure is a good description, since the theme is graduation. Whether it's from kindergarten, high school, or college, graduation is the starting point of new life adventures, and it's good that we celebrate these milestones with a little pomp and circumstance. In the first video of this series, we're going to focus on making the traditional mortarboard cap that has been the crowning glory for graduates everywhere for more than a century. In the second video, we're going to show you how to make this small cloth covered button using a standard shank or flat button. No cap is complete without a tassel. So in the third video, we're going to show you how to make a basic tassel that you can use as the finishing touch to your mortarboard cap. And as long as we're on the topic of tassels, we'll also show you how to make these simple self-capped tassels that you can put on the ends of honor cords. Once the cap is finished, Cinnamon will finish up our topic by showing us a variety of ways we can decorate the tops of our mortar boards to make the celebration more personal. Before we get started, let's look at the history of the mortar board cap. Now, Let's be honest, these caps aren't exactly high fashion. Worn anywhere outside of a graduation ceremony, they look a bit odd. And that begs the question, how did these unusual looking caps become the symbol of academic achievement? The graduation cap as we know it today has been evolving since the Middle Ages. It started out as a simple skull cap called a pileolist that was worn by clergy under the more formal head coverings as protection against the cold. Over the years, the shape of the pileolus evolved into a variety of caps with cornered crowns known as berettas and barret caps. These caps were adopted and worn not only by clergy, but also persons of dignity outside the church, including women. Because most higher learning took place in the church, it was only natural that professionals and scholars took to wearing styles of these caps that were most familiar with the clergy as a symbol of learning and scholarship. In 1583, Philip Stubbs wrote that the shape of the Beretta cap symbolized the whole monarchy of the world, east, west, north, and south, the government of which standeth upon them as a cap doth upon their heads. The shape of the Beretta cap gradually evolved into a soft square cap with a flat top, and the square section became wider and stiffer. The cap began to be called a mortar board because it started to resemble the shape of the flat board used by bricklayers to lay mortar. Soon thereafter, the idea that the cap represented the hard work and knowledge it took to become a master workman was tied to the years of hard work a student put in to build up the knowledge leading to graduation. For more than a hundred years, the mortarboard cap has become a widely used symbol of academia and learning across the globe. For this project you will need a third yard of 45 inch wide fabric, tape, school glue, tacky glue, or hot glue. I'm going to use regular school glue for this demonstration stick glue, a 5 by 12 inch piece of sturdy chipboard. Now if you don't have a sturdy chipboard to use, two layers of lighter weight chipboard, such as that used for cereal boxes, can be glued together and used instead. To prevent warping, glue the layers together with stick glue and weigh down with books until the glue is set. Scissors for both your cloth and chipboard. You don't want to use your fabric scissors for cutting chipboard. Thread, buttonhole thread, 12 inches of quarter inch wide elastic, an eyelet cutter or awl, pins, pencil, ruler, a small safety pin, a tapestry needle, a common nail for aligning the cap and mortar board. Make sure it is a nail with a narrow smooth shank and a flat head, a 15 ounce food can to use as a weight, iron and pressing tools, and a sewing machine. 
Use an eyelet cutter or an awl to cut an eighth inch hole in the center of the mortar board and the cap insert. Covering the mortar board is going to be a lot like wrapping a gift. Lay the mortar board on the wrong side of the mortar board cover where indicated on the pattern. Fold the mortar board cover over the mortar board along the fold lines on two opposite sides. Smooth the fabric on each side and use tape to secure. If necessary, you can use stick glue to adhere the edges of the fabric to the board. Fold and press the mortar board cover along the fold lines on one end. The bottom edges should follow the edge of the mortar board. If necessary, pin the bottom edges in place to help keep them aligned. Turn the folded end over the mortar board, taking care to keep the corners neat. Tape at the center of the board to secure and remove the corner pins. If necessary, pin the edges to keep them from shifting. You can glue the folded edges of the cover if you're concerned about them being too loose. However, they will be better secured when the cap insert is glued over them later on. Fold the other end the same way. Whip stitch the folded ends of the mortar board cover together to secure. Stay stitch each cap piece one half inch from the top edge where indicated on the pattern. Pin the cap pieces right sides together along the front and back edges. Stitch, finish the seam allowances, and press to one side. Turn the bottom edge of the cap under three quarters of an inch and press. Turn the top edge under one quarter inch and pin to secure. Stitch close to the folded edge to form a casing, leaving about a half inch of the seam open in the back to draw the elastic through. Use a small safety pin to draw a 12 inch length of quarter inch wide elastic through the casing. Being careful not to twist the elastic, overlap the ends about one half inch and whip stitch together. Stretch the casing to draw the elastic inside and distribute the fullness evenly. Clip the top edge of the cap up to the stay stitching. Dab stick glue to the wrong side of the cap insert at the front and back notches. With the right side out and matching the notches, adhere the top edge of the cap to the cap insert, aligning the stay stitching with the edge of the insert. Dab stick glue along one edge of the cap insert and continue adhering the top edge of the cap to the insert, aligning the stay stitching with the edge of the insert. Repeat for the other side. Use a tapestry needle or awl to open a hole in the fabric at the hole in the mortar board. Working from the top of the mortar board, Carefully push and twist a flathead nail through the hole. Lay the mortar board wrong side up on a flat surface. Apply glue a quarter inch from the outer edge of the cap insert and swirl it toward the center. Do not get glue in the hole. Carefully slide the hole of the cap insert over the nail and adhere the cap to the mortar board, aligning the back and front seams with the two points of the mortar board. Turn the cap upside down on a flat surface and place a 15 ounce food can inside to weigh it down while the glue dries. This is a good place for us to end this video. After the glue has dried, we're going to top the cap with a fabric covered button. And I'm going to show you how to do that next time. In the meantime, you can go through your button stash and see if you can find a half inch shank or flat button. It doesn't matter what it looks like so long as it's the size and shape you want it to be. The fabric will give it a fresh new look when we're all finished. See you then.